statement. Now to decide which candidate would speak first, we drew names, so we begin tonight with NDP leader Rachel Notley. You have one minute. Please proceed with your opening remarks. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Rachel Notley, and I'm running to be your Premier. People across Alberta are taking a hard look at Jim Prentice and his government. At a time when families are worried about jobs and the family budget, he's asking them to pay more for his government's bad choices. Like protecting corporate tax giveaways instead of protecting your family's health care and schools. When he says, look in the mirror because somehow what they did is your fault, you and I know that's not true. Together, we can make better choices, like caring about jobs, like protecting our education and our health care, like running our provincial affairs openly and honestly. You can hire Jim Prentice and his friends to keep on doing what they've been doing, or we can chart a new and better way forward. To do that, I'm asking you for your support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Notley. Next up is Wild Rose leader Brian Jean, and you have one minute. Good evening. My name is Brian Jean. I am the leader of the Wild Rose Party. I've lived in Fort McMurray for almost 50 years. I'm the youngest of 11 children. I've raised a family, built businesses, and been a member of Parliament for 10 years. Like Jim and Rachel, I'm a lawyer. I've also built an ice bridge at minus 60 degrees, been a registered trapper, and I've worked with my hands operating equipment. I've created jobs, I've built things, I've worked hard, and I've given back. I'm here tonight because I believe that Alberta can be better. I have a plan for Alberta, to lower taxes and balance the budget, to put patients and our seniors first in our health care system, to make our schools much better for our kids, and to restore accountability and transparency in our government. But what I won't do, I won't raise your taxes. I'm the only leader here tonight that will not raise your taxes. I hope to persuade you to vote Wild Rose so that together we can build a better, stronger Alberta. Thank you. All right, thank you. Our third speaker tonight is PC leader Jim Prentice. Your one minute begins now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Today Alberta faces important challenges to the growth of our economy, to the creation and protection of jobs and to our public finances. But we are not facing challenges that are greater than what we have faced in the past and overcome. I'm an optimist, and I know that we will overcome these challenges with that Alberta spirit, that determination that cannot be stopped. Tonight is about who can provide the stability and the leadership that will be needed over the next two years. It is about who has a plan that is realistic, that will harness our ingenuity, our free enterprise spirit, and our optimism to break the boom and bust cycle and grow our economy, save for the future, to protect our frontline services in health care, in education, and senior citizens. This election is about choices. The plan that we have put forward strives to make that Alberta stronger than ever. I ask for your support. Thank you, Mr. Prentice. And our final opening remarks tonight from Liberal leader David Swan. You have one minute. Please begin. Good evening, fellow Albertans. Thank you for being here. For 30 years, Albertans trusted me to give them the straight goods on their health, their risks, and their choices. I was able to help thousands of people in my medical career simply by doing the right thing and telling what the politicians were really doing, what they want to do, and their well-being. Over 12 years as MLA, what has become very clear is that this government is failing Albertans. The PCs have blown through all our resource wealth in one generation because they refuse to do the job and they refuse to ask their big donor buddies to pay their fair share, even as they tell you to look in the mirror and tighten your belts. And what have you gotten for your sacrifice? Overcrowded schools, rundown hospitals, and severe shortage of long-term care spaces for your elderly. You deserve better. That's why the Alberta Liberals have brought forward a progressive idea, progressive policies that your provide is essential up, services and a business climate we all need. Thank you, Dr. Swan. Now that wraps up our opening statements. We'll now begin our questions, beginning with Roger Kincaid from Chorus Radio Alberta. And the questions for PC leader Jim Prentice. Roger. 
Mr. Prentice, you've said repeatedly that Albertans want to see core services maintained, including education. This week, 19 school boards stepped forward to criticize your budget for failing to fund the 12,000 additional students expected to enroll this fall. They tell us it isn't sustainable to use their reserve funding. How do you expect this crucial core service to be maintained? Well, thank you. Uh, I was raised in a family where uh, education and hard work were non-negotiable. Education is a priority for uh, my party. We are in the process of building uh, 200 schools across the province at this point in time. We have in our budget protected uh, teaching positions, uh, teacher salaries, and we've also asked that school boards work with us, that they work together with us. Many of the school boards have significant reserves totaling $460 million. And we've asked that they help invest those dollars in securing and making sure that we have appropriate frontline teaching services for our children. Certainly, we will watch this. We'll work with boards. And if any boards are experiencing difficulty, as the minister has said, we will work with them and find solutions. First rebuttal now will be from NDP leader Rachel Notley. And you have 45 seconds, Rachel. Well, thank you. You know, parents shouldn't have to worry that their children are struggling to learn in an overcrowded classroom. The fact of the matter is, is that the classrooms in Alberta have already been growing. And Mr. Prentice's plan would see us start school next year, next September, as parents sending our kids, along with uh, 12,000 new kids, into the school without a single solitary teacher being hired. That's just wrong. Now, I applaud the school boards for standing up and making the points that they did. The fact of the matter is, is that we need to reverse Mr. Prentice's cuts to our education budget. We need to reduce class sizes because Albertans know that an investment in education is always a good one. 45 seconds now to hear from uh, Dr. Swan. Alberta Liberals will make a major investment in public education for our children. We'll invest $100 million to replace retiring teachers and hire new graduates to reduce class sizes. We'll build new schools on the priority list. Alberta Liberals will reduce school fees to families and reduce school fees that families must pay to keep their children in school. Education is the best investment society can make. It is not a cost. The PCs have effectively cut our education system for five consecutive years. That's why the school boards have spoken out. All right, thank you, Dr. Swan. And the final rebuttal to Brian Jean with the Wild Rose. You have 45 seconds. Thank you. Let's be clear. The education budget crunch is a result of PC mismanagement. Despite 10 years of record revenues, the PCs ran a decade of deficits. And now they're playing politics with our kids' education. This is not acceptable. Under my leadership, school boards will no longer play the funding guessing game. They will know how much money they will receive. This will mean better decisions, long-term predictable funding for the tools teachers and school boards need for our children, to teach our children. And this will take us back to number one in the world in education. Uh, now for our first free debate of the night. I'll be moderating as needed. Uh, the topic is open. Uh, Lord, if, I, if I might begin, uh, Ms. Notley, um, thank you for your comments and uh, I respect your opinion, but um, I don't agree with you and I think we should talk about the facts. I mean, the education budget is uh, a budget that totals $7.5 billion. It has not been cut. In fact, the budget has been increased. It's been increased by $145 million uh, this year. In addition, we are already um, spending 11% more than the national average. And in fact, the classroom sizes that we have meet the standards of the Learning Commission in terms of guidelines. Response to that? Well, in fact, his budget has been cut uh, because his government made a commitment to teachers to increase their salaries. And so that's why the budget's gone up a bit, but not enough. He's, his own budget documents say he's taking $200 million out of the system. That means that special needs kids are going to get less, First Nations kids are going to get less, uh, students with English, learning, English language learning needs are going to get less, and 12,000 new kids kids will not be funded. So that's a problem. And the fact of the matter is, is we're not in line with the Learning Commission. The lear we have averages, but in many cases, uh, uh, class classroom sizes are growing. Just yesterday, uh, a, a school trustee from Elk Island talked about their kindergartens going from 18 kids in kindergarten, which under your budget would move to 28 kids. Now, I don't Dr. know if you've ever you seen what 28, agree, kids, in a what 28 kids in a kindergarten class look like. Surely. And I will tell you, it doesn't look like good learning. Surely Let's let the, uh, Mr. Prentice respond, and Mr. Dr. Swan wants to get into, and I know... Uh, the difficulty is that over 100 schools have actually been promised by the PC government. That's just over the last four years. How many schools have been built? One. 
a whole bunch of empty fields all across Alberta. Empty fields, empty, empty fields means empty classrooms, which means our children will not receive the education they need. That is not acceptable. Dr. We Spartan. need a government that actually follows through with commitments. We're also dealing with families that are paying up to $450 a child for school fees. And indeed, I visited a, a, a childhood, uh, an early childhood classroom that was 40 people, 40 children in the class. We're having long busing, uh, hours and hours on buses instead of in classrooms or with their families. This is not acceptable in a province as wealthy as Alberta. And it begs the question, where is the planning in Alberta? The planning is here. Well, certainly. And what we are doing is actually eliminating all mandatory school fees. That's part of our budget. It's part of our fiscal plan. It's a good plan. Albertans like that plan. Mr. Prentice? Well, the plan that's been put forward, uh, you know, reduces head office ex expenditures in education by 9%. And, you know, I hope, Ms. Notley, that you would agree with me. We have asked the school boards to contribute to solving the problem. They have $460 million, half a billion dollars in reserves. I'm aware this would be the time to use a rainy day fund. I, I think the, we I'm all aware, agree I think that. we all know that they have that money, but that money in many cases, as you know, if you've been speaking with the school board trustees, in many cases is targeted for other things, and it's also not consistent across the school board. So some school boards have the ability to use that money, some don't. The fact of the matter is this. You're prepared to send 12,000 new kids into the classroom next September without a teacher, because that's, well, that's more not, important that to you. It's more important to you to protect your corporate tax giveaways. That's a choice. You talked about choices in the opening, and that is one of the choices that your government is making. Give you a little time to respond talk to about that. A talk about a lack of investment in children. Many of the children going into school today are not adequately prepared. They haven't had the early childhood development that they need. The Learning Commission said that they have 50% of children that aren't even prepared to take on first grade school. Teachers are dealing with behavior problems, learning problems, emotional problems, families that are in, in stress, and you're expecting teachers to, to manage a, a tremendous uh, intensity of complex problems in their schools. Final opportunity will we'll go to Mr. Prentice, and this will wrap things up on this question. Thank you, Dr. Swan, but let's not be too hard on the Alberta education system. Uh, we rank fifth in the top five in the world in terms of the quality of the education system that we have. And the we truth is, Ms. Notley, the up. truth is that we spend uh, more than the national average, significantly more, almost $1,500 per student, more than uh, other provinces in this country. The next couple of years will be tough, and we would ask school boards to work with us, and we'll watch and ensure that we get successful outcomes for our children. I think we can know 12,000 students without a we'll teacher who don't need to wait till September to know or to wrap know it up about now, that. And I know, this uh, should be the like, number one priority for your wrap it up now, our Dr. children, Swan. our future. I'm going to wrap it up now, and we'll give you an opportunity, uh, Mr. Jean, and another question here. But let's go to this one now. Free debate coming to a close on that. Thank you all. Move on to our second question. It comes from Global Nationals' Vashi Capellos, and it's a question for Rachel Notley. Ms. Notley, you say if you're elected, you'll raise the corporate tax rate from 10 to 12 percent. But critics are concerned that could cost Alberta a lot of jobs in an already fragile economy. You and your party insist that won't be the case. You did the math, but you also did the math on your fiscal platform, and you were more than a billion dollars off in your calculations. Why should Albertans trust you on the math for corporate taxes? Well, uh, to begin with, in terms of our platform, yes. Uh, at the day we uh, printed our platform, we realized we'd made a mistake right after we, print we printed it. And I decided we needed to uh, make sure people knew about that as soon as possible. So the next day, uh, I, I let people know. And it was a mistake. And that's the way I would run my government. You'd know if there was something like that that happened. In terms of corporate taxes, though, you're asking me about taxation. And you know, Mr. Prentice and I, and frankly, Mr. Jean and I as well, have a fundamental difference of opinion on that matter. Mr. Prentice will do whatever it takes to protect his tax giveaways to large, profitable corporations, including a billion dollar cut to health care. Albertans know that's not fair. We can invest Two in seconds. targeted job creation, and that's the way we'll do it. That's time. We are going to go to Mr. Jean now. You have 45 seconds to respond. Thank you. <clears throat> The Wild Rose is the only party that won't raise your taxes. In fact, the coalition of tax raisers is over here to my left. We have, she will raise taxes. He has already raised taxes. He will raise taxes. Wild Rose and Brian Jean are the only ones in this race that will not raise your taxes. We will not do that on corporations, and we will not do that on you individuals. $2,500 per family is what you are currently paying in increased taxes just over the last few months. That is unacceptable. That's out of your pockets. Over four years, that's $10,000. You have to make up the difference for that because Jim Prentice and the PCs cannot manage properly the economy, cannot man manage education, and cannot manage health care. We can do better. We will do better. 
the wild rose will do better. David Swan, your 45 seconds. It's time for the 1% and the big corporations to pay their fair share. Tax cuts for everyday Albertans and small business with a modest tax increase for Jim's golfing buddies and the biggest corporations. Liberals will cancel the health levy, reverse many of the government's unnecessary new fees. Our plan is $1.4 billion better than the Prentice plan. Liberals are calling for an independent budget officer to provide an accurate and honest forecasting, something the NDP appears to need some help with. Thank you, Dr. Swan. The final rebuttal to Jim Prentice. You have 45 seconds. Thank you. I, I know that raising corporate taxes seems like an easy solution, but in fact it will destroy investments and destroy jobs. We know this, one of Alberta's greatest competitive advantages, the Alberta advantage, is in fact our low corporate rates, which attract investment here from all over the world and create jobs for Albertans. That's why we are the economic engine of this country, that's why we are the free enterprise engine of this country. You know, the NDP uh, corporate tax increases which have been proposed will destroy that advantage. They will result in us having uh, corporate tax rates that are higher than Ontario, higher than British Columbia, higher in fact even than the province of Quebec. We need jobs in this province at this point in time more than ever. We need to encourage investment and protect and strengthen our economy. I'm going to open this up to debate and Mr. Jean, you go first. Well, leading economists have been clear. A 1% increase in corporate taxes means 9,000 jobs. What they're proposing is to eliminate almost 20,000 jobs in Alberta. But let's look at the Jim Prentice's priorities. When he raises taxes, how many times did he go after families? 59 times. How many times did he go after corporations? Zero. One of the reasons we're in this mess is because apprentice PCs have wasted billions of dollars every year on corporate welfare. The Wild Rose will eliminate that corporate wel welfare completely. We will stick up for the priorities of Albertans and make sure that Albertans actually have service, public service, because that's what it's about. Public service is about service to the public and serving public with their priorities. Mr. Prentice? Well, if I might respond, uh, I mean, Brian, your plan doesn't hang together, which is the worst thing for a conservative to do. You, you promised $10 billion in uh, new promises, no revenue attached to them. You promised to build $25 billion in infrastructure with $5 billion of cash and no debt. And you've committed to $18 billion in cuts to the public service in this province. And you refuse to say what you will cut or where. And so I ask you tonight, we're here in front of all Albertans, now is your chance to come clean and tell people what are you proposing to cut? How are you going to achieve $18 billion in expenditure we'll give reductions? Mr. Mr. Jean a chance to respond, so we'll get everybody else in too. Well, I've, I've, First, Mr. Jean, to respond to that. Sorry. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to respond. I would refer Mr. Prentice to page 12 of his budget. On his budget, he talks about an economist, a leading economist, Jack Mintz, who has looked at our numbers. Our numbers, he says, add up. It makes sense that they add up because they do add up. And if you turn to page five in our budget, they are all clearly laid out. I have a copy for Mr. Prentice here, and during the break, I'm more than happy to share it with all the leaders. All right. With all due respect, Jack Mintz said Notley he did not endorse first. this yeah. budget. Okay. Uh, well, you know, I'd like, I'd like, uh, what I'd like to do a little bit here is cut through all the hyperbole. Uh, you know, what uh, our plan is the only plan that actually has uh, talks about creating jobs. We propose a job tax credit, which would create 27,000 jobs this year. It's modeled on the same kind of plan that both Mr. Jean and Mr. Prentice supported when they were uh, uh, in, the, um, in the Federal House of Commons. Moreover, our plan looks at finding ways to upgrade the resources that we have here in Alberta to create more long-term sustainable jobs. So that's what our plan says. Jim Prentice's plan specifically outlines losing and cutting 2,000 jobs. And Mr. Jean's plan doesn't actually not, uh, name the number of people who will lose their jobs, but based on his numbers, it's probably it about 10 times that. It so the fact the of the matter is, is we're the only one with a plan that is focused on creating jobs. Let's hear from Dr. We know Swan now. That's what's important to Albertans. Uh, let's talk about the Alberta advantage. Mr. Prentice, uh, that seems to be the, the uh, clear winner for uh, large corporations, and it's the loser for most Albertans. Uh, you, we have the lowest tax rate in the country by a country mile, and we could give back at least $5 billion to the public purse and still be the lowest taxing province in the country. It's a shame that we can't build schools, we can't take care of the elderly, we can't uh, provide basic uh, early childhood development, but we can give back $11.6 billion, more than any other province gives back to their citizens and their corporations. 
Mr. Okay. Prentice? Well, if I may, or just to uh, return, we're not going to get an answer from Mr. Jean, but I'd like to return to Ms. Notch, Motley's position. And, um, you know, respectfully, I, I don't agree. What we need is a thriving, uh, free enterprise business sector that is strong, that propels investment and jobs. We don't need an NDP job creation scheme where money is taken away from people that would otherwise invest and create jobs, and then they have to apply to a bureaucracy in the government. And if the NDP support the job they want to create, they'll get some funding. This is, no, this is not the way to create our, wealth and quick enterprise. Quick comment, in response our, to that, and final word to Brian right. Our plan never suggested that we would approve or not approve jobs. But I'll tell you this, what business owners and business leaders are telling me is that what makes Alberta competitive is a whole bunch of different things. Do we have a sales tax? No. Do we have an educated workforce? Yes. Do we have a health care system where people can get into the hospital Wrap within up, three days? All of those things contribute to whether we're competitive. We we are competitive. Mr. Prentice may be a little bit, uh, um, you know, may not have a, a, a great sense of hope about Wrap it our up, please. competitiveness, final word. but I, I know I that we Those are very can good be competitive. And a quick final comment from you, uh, Mr. Jean. Thank you. With yes, respect, Mr. Mr. Prentice, you know what you're saying is not the truth. Instead of making tough choices during difficult times, Jim Prentice chose to take money out of each and every Albertan's pockets. Jim Prentice has raised taxes 59 times that will cost your family an average of $2,500 each and every year for the next four years. We do not believe that is acceptable. We will not do that. We will stick up for your priorities and make sure we have an efficient, well-run government. Thank you all. all right, thank you. We are going to move forward with another question from one of our journalists on the panel. Global's Tom Vernon will ask the next question to Brian Jean. Mr. Jean, you will have four 45 seconds to respond. Go ahead, Tom. Mr. Jean, this week you proposed flying patients to independent facilities outside of Canada to reduce surgical wait times. But the patient would be on the hook for any cost above the cost of the Alberta public treatment. For many, that sounds like better care for those who can afford it. How is this not two-tiered health care? Let me be perfectly clear. Our par party is absolutely dedicated to strengthening the health care system and living up to the responsibilities under the Health Care Act, Canada Health Act. In fact, Mr. Prentice himself campaigned and endorsed a much bigger version of our wait times guarantee in 2006 with the federal government. Unlike the PCs, we don't think Albertans should be waiting a year to get a knee or hip replacement. And we don't think cancer patients should be forced to wait wondering if their sickness is growing, if things are getting worse for them. Their families should not be put through that stress. They should have other opportunities to, for them. And that is exactly what the Wild Rose will do. We will cure the wait time problem that the PCs have brought in, and we will make sure we would do it efficiently in the best interests of the people of Alberta. Jim Prentice has the first rebuttal with 45 seconds. Well, the Progressive Conservative Party is committed to our public health care system. You know, we have a fine system in this province. It needs work. We know that. Uh, certainly, uh, we have invested a, a great deal as Albertans in our public health care system. Uh, it has grown from $8 billion in 2004 to some $18 billion today. And I, I freely concede that this is the biggest management challenge that the Premier of Alberta faces. But the solution is to fix the Alberta system. It's to make it work. It's to give the empowerment to frontline workers. It's to make changes to governance. It's not to do what the Wild Rose is proposing, which is to simply fund wealthy Albertans to go to the United States to secure their health care. You know, focus on Mr. Brian, focus on the Alberta system. Let's improve the Alberta system. Let's make it the best in the world. Let's not pay people to go to another country for health care. Okay, that's time. Rachel Notley, you have 45 seconds on the floor. Well, thank you. Well, you know, I think, unfortunately, at this point, everyone in Alberta understands the stress and anxiety of waiting hour after hour in an ER waiting room. And we also know that these wait times are getting worse and worse under the, the neglect of this Conservative government. Now, Mr. Prentice's plan Plan to take a billion dollars out of health will actually make things much worse. That's not what Albertans want. That's not what they're looking for. They want health care to be there for them when they and their family need it. The Alberta NDP would reverse those cuts. We would invest in long-term care to protect and improve your family's health care. We care about health care because you count on it. I think, uh, Dr. Swan, you get the final 45. Alberta Liberals have a five-point plan to fix health care, publicly funded, publicly delivered health care. We'll invest $125 million more in home care, community supports and long-term care to free up hospital beds and improve wait times. We'll invest in primary care networks to hire nurses, nurse practitioners, pharmacists and others to help manage chronic disease and further reduce hospitalizations. Liberals will ensure health care experts manage the independent Alberta Health Services Board and will empower the auditor to fully audit and monitor health spending. We'll invest in injury and disease prevention and public health. Five Three seconds. percent of our budget is all that's 
invested now. Liberals will repair our rundown hospitals and work with our Catholic partners at Covenant Health time is to up. rebuild the Misericordia Hospital. Your time is up, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to address a question to uh, Mr. Jean, who the question was at. The two-tier health care was raised. Dr. Swan, uh, take it away. I guess I would ask uh, Mr. Jean, what is it that insurance companies add to health care? Access to a waiting list is not access to health care. When we're talking about health care, we're actually talking about wait times, about people waiting for services, about people waiting for a better quality of life and lining up at doors, pharmacy doors, waiting for prescriptions, being more of a burden on society. They can't work. They're at home. They're not producing. They're not feeling good about themselves. Albertans want to know when they get sick, their government-funded health system, they will get treated within a reasonable time. Under the PC government, the wait Mr. times Jean, in Alberta Mr. Jean. have the worst become example. horrendous. The they are not here first, please, Thank uh, you. Dr. Mr. Jean, really, with, with all due respect, you know, all buzzwords and talking points aside, what you are talking about is creating a two-tiered health care system Absolutely. where the wealthy get access and the rest of us don't. Now, I appreciate you're probably frustrated with the mismanagement of our health care system that we've seen under this government for a long time, but privatizing our health care system is absolutely no one has said anything about absolutely privatization. Not, it, no, you've That's actually said everything the about privatizing Mr. the health care system. Fine That's mind. exactly what the outcome is of your strategy. And Albertans should be very worried about what it is you're talking Mr. about. Mr. Prentice, I, I think it's clear that Brian agrees in a two-tier system, and we'll just leave that. But I, I want to pursue a, a, a matter with Ms. Notley. You know, I think you and I agree on the importance of health care and the importance of frontline workers, but I do think we disagree on the best way to solve the problem. You know, your plan proposes the expenditure of even more money. Money. We are already spending more money on health care than anyone in the country. Well, it is I, eating I everyone agree, else's lunch. I will agree. And so that we need we efficiency. Are. We need innovation, if I might continue. Yes. We need efficiency. Briefly. We need innovation. We need to localize mm -hmm. decision making. And we need to empower frontline mm -hmm. workers. We are putting adequate financial resources into the system. Clearly, the Wild uh, Rose is the only party that, that has put forward let's a let proposal. Let's let Mr. Jean go for a minute, and then we'll uh, get to you, uh, Rachel. Yep. Thank you. Wild Rose is the only party that has put forward a plan, a reasonable plan, a sound plan, to reduce reduce wait times in this province. Some of these wait times are double, and the quality of life of individuals in this province as a result of PC mismanagement is unacceptable. Quick comment now from Rachel Notley. Well, I'll agree that we are certainly spending a lot more money in health care than in some other, well, a little bit more money than other jurisdictions, but what that is is an indictment of your government's ability to manage the issue. The fact of the matter is is that we're not going to fix it by creating more chaos in the system and then, and then well, taking a billion chaos. dollars, well, you kind of are, and especially if you take a billion dollars out of it, that's going to create chaos. Dr. Swan? We need to stabilize the system. We need to reverse the cuts that Mr. Prentice has planned. We need to put those long-term care beds in place that this government has intentionally stopped building well, over the I last might, four years. Quick response for Mr. Prentice and Mr. Swan. Swan. Is we create a better, a better system. It's not like the gross mismanagement of the system started with political decisions that continue today. It has been so politicized and politicians have been choosing, picking and choosing who's going to manage the system. If they don't like them, they fire them and then they go on and do what they want to do. Uh, that's created tremendous chaos, insecurity and, and inefficiencies with a, a culture of fear and intimidation that is reverberating still 10 years after all response these changes. Response from Mr. Prentice and final word to Mr. Jean. Quick response please Mr. Prentice. Well, um, you know, picking up on the discussion I've had with Ms. Notley, I think we are in agreement that we are spending more than anyone in Canada in terms of our, our health care system. And she's referred to continuing care beds. One of the matters that's taking pressure off of beds, the system. Actually. It's here. Your government Mr. Prentice continues is to the, use the language inappropriately, and if, that needs to stop. If I might go finish up. One of the improvements that has been made already to the system in the six months since I've become the Premier is we are constructing uh, more continuing care beds. We are constructing beds so that senior citizens have an option not to be in an acute care bed. What we need and it's is making already care. a significant Final distance. word to Mr. Jean. <laughs> All of our savings are targeted at bloated management and corporate handouts that the Prentice PCs are afraid to touch. They are afraid to touch it because they know they can't control it. They know they can't manage it. They have too much entitlement, too much cronyism, and too many people that they owe favors to within all areas and aspects of government. We'll end it that up includes there. includes health care. We'll end it up there. Thank you. We're going to uh, take a quick break now, our first break, and coming up, uh, the first question from our viewer poll. Yes, stay with us. We'll be right back here on Global with more of our Leaders Debate 2015.
Well, welcome back to our Decision Alberta Leaders Debate. So far, we've heard from the leaders on education, jobs, and health care, and there's some interesting debate happening on our live blog as well at globalnews.ca slash Alberta Election. Of course, we can't ask all of the questions here tonight, so we encourage you to ask those of the candidates in your ridings who may come knocking at your door. But we did put out the call for the most pressing questions you want answered tonight. As we mentioned, we received hundreds, and it gave us an interesting snapshot of what issues matter the most to you in this election. Here is the first question chosen by you in our poll at globalnews.ca. The question will first be answered by David Swan, and it comes to us from Clyde Rigsby of Edmonton. So with 45 seconds, our leaders will have to be very to the point on this. Clyde wants to know, what are the three most important problems Albertans face, and how will your party resolve them in the upcoming term? Dr. Swan, you have 45 seconds. I've spent a lot of time on the doors in the last month, and the three most important problems people raise with me are having a job, putting food on the table, getting the services they need when they need them, including adequate quality health care and accessible uh, education for their children, and trusted leadership. Jobs clearly are the number one issue that every Albertan faces if they're concerned with an economic downturn such as we have today. The Alberta Liberals would eliminate small business taxes and stimulate new a new economy and increase the job opportunities for many Albertans, including in the new uh, energy and renewables field. Five seconds. We would also include uh, more funding for preschool and school education to make sure that children get adequate education with no fees. Thank you, Dr. Swan. Go. No Thank transportation. You. First rebuttal goes to uh, Jim Prentice. Mr. Prentice, you have 45 seconds. Thank you. Well, uh, first and foremost, we must protect and fight for every job in this province. Uh, we must stay competitive for investment and for job creation. We must maintain our tax advantage that will lead to jobs because now more than ever, this is the need uh, of, of us all Albertans. We also, secondly, must protect the quality of our frontline services, health care, education, senior citizen care. In the circumstances that we're in, we must protect the quality of our frontline services. And thirdly, we must get off of the boom-bust oil cycle. We must uh, leave behind the era when we watch OPEC meetings on television to tell how we can provide public service. We need to rebalance our public finances to diversify our public revenue so that we'll be strong as a province and off of the boom and bust cycle. All right, thank you. And now to Brian Jean. Your 45 seconds begins now. It's simple. The three biggest problems are higher taxes, broken health care, and destroyed trust. The solution to all three is to vote Wild Rose. We are the only party that will not raise your taxes. We have a patient-centered plan to address health and seniors' care all across the province. And we are the only party, the only party, that will put an end to PC cronyism, PC entitlements, and restore trust in your government. Final rebuttal goes to uh, Rachel Notley. Well, thank you. Uh, what our priority, we have three main priorities. First of all, we need to protect our health and education, including reversing the cuts that Mr. Prentice wants to, to make to those important institutions that matter so much to Albertans. We also need to invest in and focus on job creation, because we know that Albertans are really worried about where their next paycheck's going to come from. So we need to be smart about that. And we need to do all of that within a fair revenue generation context. It is, quite frankly, time for large profitable corporations and the top 10 percent to contribute just a little bit more to balance the budget and to protect our health care and our education. Seventy percent of Albertans asked by this government about what they should do said that's the way we should go and we would listen to you and move forward on that. Okay as we go into free debate we'll open the floor to Dr. David Swan to start things off please. Well very clearly the boom and bust cycle that the Tories have been living for many many years hasn't actually fallen on any Ser serious results and the current plan is not going to get us off there. The 10-year plan is very speculative and I guess Albertans want to know that you're serious that about taking a fair share from the largest corporations, getting the largest profits on the planet, much of which is leaving the province. And they're going to help us build this province and protect the critical services that we deserve. Mr. Prentice? Well, Dr. Swan, it, it is a good plan and it's received positive comment from all of the financial analysts across the country. But um, I'd like to go back to Brian and give him, uh, afford him one more opportunity uh, to come clean and speak with Albertans and explain how he will cut 
18 billion dollars of expenditures from the government of Alberta's public services with no paint. Is it going to be teachers? Is it going to be nurses? What's it going to be, Brian? Mr. Dean, go ahead. Thank you. Well, I always appreciate a good fear monger, but what I don't appreciate is taxes, taxes, and more taxes. We are the only, ta the only party that will not raise your taxes. In fact, Jim Prentice has, with his PC cronies, raised taxes $2,500 for every family in Alberta. That is not fair. That is not right, especially when we have one of the most expensive systems, most expensive governments in the country. A new Wild Rose government will put an end to the perks that the PCs enjoy. We will put an end to free gas, free oil changes, free car wash and still being able to collect 43.5 cents for each and every question. kilometer that you may or may Wait, not sir, travel. We will prohibit office. all corporate and union donations. We will stop that kind of revolving door of cronyism and patronism to their friends. We will stop that. I think the question was specifically to you about where you'll get the spending from, where you'll get the savings. Mr. Prentice, Jim, you're fear mongering. You're trying to say something to that doesn't question, exist. Brian. You've been offered the chance to answer the question three times tonight. Answer Jim, the question. It's not a question that has any results to it because it's not true. Well, then answer it. You are deceiving the people of Alberta with you your fear-mongering. Page five of my budget clearly indicates where those cuts will come from. It's itemized, it's costed, it's there. And your expert, your economist, your friend that you indicate is such a great person across the country as an economist has looked at our numbers and they add up. You have them on, in your budget as well. So if he's good enough for the PC party, he must be good enough for the Wild Rose. You know, we have a budget that is if, if fully could, costed. You could answer the question, Brian. There. You could answer uh, the question. No, I mean, this is, is certainly an interesting, interesting dispute between the two of you here, but I, I'm not really sure if this is the best way to be talking to a donor, Mr. Prentice. You know, uh, three years ago, Mr. Jean and Mr. Prentice were in the same caucus. Uh, last summer, Mr. Jean wrote Mr. Prentice a check for $10,000 in support of his campaign. Last Christmas, more than a half of Mr. Jean's caucus abandoned their role as official opposition for Albertans to join Mr. Prentice's caucus. So my question is this, based on this record, Albertans, do you really believe that you can trust either of these two to bring about the kind of change that you're looking for in our province today? Ms. Notchley, I think we've moved far away from the question, which was the It'll three happen. most important things It'll in happen. Alberta. So I mean, let's talk about jobs. Let's talk about the creation of jobs and you know, I do take uh, I respect you But I take issue with the NDP policies that you've put forward the suggestion that we should have a royalty review in this province at this mm -hmm. point in time The last time we went through a royalty review it was devastating parts of the economy have never yet recovered from that Could you seriously suggest that we would undertake the a royalty, royalty review? review corporate did tax not increases, cause if I might the just, international drop increases. in the price of oil And you know most Albertans know that and when I go door knocking I gotta tell you every time time I go door knocking and I talk to people, they say, why aren't we getting our fair share in royalties? Why don't we upgrade more here? Why is Jim Prentice so focused on creating jobs in Texas? Jobs? His Rachel, whole plan seconds. is to create jobs in Texas. Do you think and you know, Albertans jobs? are not pumped about your creating this was a disaster jobs in last Texas. Time that we launched the royalty it was, had nothing this to do with the NDP royalty review. The royalty review is and about creating an open, transparent forum for Albertans to know that they are getting the best value you, they can for the resource note. they own. We'll wrap it Another up on that question. Boondoggle isn't exactly what Alberta needs either, Rachel. Out of time on that. Suggesting one. that. Out of time on that one. There may be an opportunity later. Uh, we're out of time, though. Moving on to the next question uh, to Wild Rose leader Brian Jean, and it comes from Vashi Capellos. Mr. Jean, if the polls are to be believed, there will be a minority government here in two weeks. If you end up holding the balance of power, and Mr. Prentice and Miss Notley approach you with the idea of forming a coalition. Who do you choose? Thanks, Rossi. The only way to stop your taxes from going up is to vote Wild Rose, to vote for a Wild Rose candidate to send them to the legislature. The more Wild Rose MLAs, the less your taxes will be. The Wild Rose will never be part of the three-party coalition for higher taxes. She wants to raise your taxes. He already has raised your taxes and probably will do it again. We're talking about and he coalitions wants to raise on this question. The Wild Rose will not vote with anyone in relation to raising taxes. We will not be part of the coalition for higher taxes. Thank you. First rebuttal on this topic is from David Swan. You have 45 seconds. Uh, the, the values of the Wild Rose Party are totally inconsistent with the Alberta Liberal Party. I don't see any possibility of working as a coalition with the Wild Rose Party. Uh, we can work with our friends on the, on the ND uh, Party. We can work with some of our friends who share common policies and values with the PCs, uh, I don't think it's possible to work with uh, an extreme party like the Wild Rose as a coalition member. 
All right, now to Rachel Notley again. You have 45 seconds. Go ahead. Well, well, thank you. Well, you know, when I started this campaign, I made it very clear. I'm running to be premier, and that means having 44 or more seats, and that's so that I can deliver the priorities that, that Albertans are telling us they want to see. Clear choice, a, cl a choice for jobs, for health care, for education, and for asking those who've done well to contribute their fair share. That being said, if Albertans choose something else, my commitment to them is to work together with all MLAs in the legislature legislature to get things done. That's what I think leadership is. That's what I think we owe the voters. The legislature will reflect the will of the voters and it will be my job to do whatever I can to work as well as I can to get the priorities that I believe in delivered to uh, Albertans. And so final, that's the way I'll approach it. Final comment to uh, Jim Prentice, 45 seconds. I'm campaigning to represent a majority conservative government uh, in the Legislative Assembly. As I said in my opening comments, these are challenging times for us as a province, challenging day again today in this province in terms of job losses. The question that's before Albertans, the choice that's before Albertans, is who has a plan that is a realistic plan, that's a sensible plan, that is balanced, that will balance our budget, protect our frontline services. I'm not campaigning to be part of a coalition government. I think that we need the stability and the leadership of a government, a majority government, for the next two years in this province. I have been fascinated to hear the discussion going on between uh, Brian and Ms. Notchley through the, through the media about um, their coalition, and so I'm fascinated to hear what it will look like. All right, that to is time clear, there. To be very clear, the comments that I made in the, the media to, were <laughs> not that I was going to form a coalition with the Wild Rose. It was that uh, if there was a minority government, I would roll up my sleeves in the same fashion that Jack Layton did back in the day and try to work with whoever was there to want to work with. We, with respect, the the absence of that, in the absence of that, we'd be in another election in six months. And as much as Mr. Prentice loves calling frequent elections, I don't actually think that's what Albertans want. So responsible leadership would mean dialogue, it would mean having conversations, it would be it would mean representing your issues as well as you could. And I think that anybody that sort of stomps off into the corner and says I won't talk to anybody else is not ready for leadership. Yeah, there's one thing to form a coalition with uh, values to the far right of you. It's another to work constructively with individuals on policies and specific issues that Albertans care about. Uh, that's what the other liberals Albertans will be prepared to do. I respect Albertans, and I believe in two things: better government, better run government, and low taxes and balanced budgets. And what we have here is a situation where I'm being asked to compromise our principles. We will not compromise our principles. We believe in low taxes and balanced budgets, and we believe in good ideas. And we believe in a better government, a more efficient, better run government. This government is the most expensive government in Canada. We with will respect, do better jobs. With respect, uh, Brian, I might Albertans are neither far right or far left. They're pretty centrist in their Frankly, values. Frankly, Albertan they families, publicly funded seniors, health care, students, low and income earners, for their I would just simply, uh, these tax of you increases. are able to provide that. Gentlemen, I would, I, would, I would simply make the point that these are challenging All times in our province. All three leaders on this stage will These are the most taxes. challenging times that we have faced in this province in a generation. We need the stability and we need the leadership of a conservative government, a majority government that can govern this province, balance our books, protect frontline services, build infrastructure, and at the same time reduce the cost of our government. It is this is a call order that does it not is lend itself to at government. a time when we are in such a significant global economic certainty. And what's the answer for Jim Prentice and the PCs? It's to raise your taxes, to take more money out of your pockets so you can't spend it on the things that you want to spend it on. Things like sports for your children. Things like ballet for your children. If, 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 I, could, if I could interrupt, you but Mr. Jean, I think we've I been talking about the issue Jim of Prentice stability. Jim will do a better job managing and, and your money so than you will. If I could just talk about that, uh, even a majority government doesn't actually give us stability if we call elections whenever. It, it, it appeals to us with no regard to the legislation that we pass. So that's a bit of a, a concern. It's also not stability uh, to our frontline services when you claw a billion dollars out of our health care. So that's not stability either. It's not stability when you tell Albertans that 12,000 kids are going to walk into our schools next year and not one of them well, is going to get a new I, teacher. I, I respect so your point of view. none of those issues actually represent stability to me. I think Albertans are looking for stability. They're just right. not getting it from your government anymore. If I might, Ms. Motley, I, I simply make the point that I've served in a, um, in a minority parliament. I, I know well how they work and, and I don't think the circumstances our province is in now 
are very challenging. I don't think they lend themselves to the formation of a coalition in the way that you would like to. I think we need a majority. I don't want a coalition. Government. Just to be right. very clear, well, I've made it very clear at the outset. I'm running to be premier. I'm running to have you a majority did talk about government. Coalition. And no, I actually never did. <laughs> but we, we did, uh, what we, I talked about was a hypothetical who minority. You, who you would consider? But, so, thank you so much. Uh, I ran to be Premier, I'm running to be Premier, and uh, I would ensure that there was stability here through a stable revenue system and by protecting those public services that Albertans care so All right, that's all the time we have yeah. for that part. Okay, we have another question for our party leaders, and for that, we're going back to our public poll. Oh. These ones were at globalnews.ca, and we'll be, this one will be directed to Rachel Notley. You will have 45 seconds to respond. It comes to us from Eric Sirs of Edmonton, who asks, how specifically can your party make changes to the revenue streams available to the government so that the quality of my children's education or the quality of care my parent receives in the health care system is not directly correlated to the price of oil at any given year? Go ahead. Well, thank you so much, and that's a really important question. And I think in some levels, at least some of us up here are trying very hard to, to wean this, this province off of, of uh, the royalty revenue roller coaster, although unfortunately one of us is part of the party that built the roller coaster, so, you know, we have a bit of a problem there. But that being said, what we need to do is stabilize our revenue. We've talked about asking profitable cor cor uh, corporations to pay just a little bit more, to pay their fair share, 1 or 2 percent. We've also talked about getting rid of the flat tax and putting in uh, a progressive tax. We would eliminate the health care, uh, the waiting room tax, and we would ensure that 90% uh, uh, of Albertans would pay less taxes under our plan than they would under Mr. Prentice's. But by doing that, we can ensure stability and move ourselves off of relying time. on those royalties. First response to Brian Jean. Let's be clear. Revenue sources by these three parties means higher taxes, more money out of your pocket, more of your hard-earned money. Like Jim did, $2,500 per, per year per family. In the last decade, every time resource revenues went up, the PCs spent it all. And more. More. Savings are gone. Debt is at record levels. And now the Prentice PCs are asking you to pay 59 new taxes. The way to get off the roller coaster is to stop spending so much money and manage the money you get properly. At the kitchen table, we all do it. Albertans sit around the kitchen table and they have to balance their budgets. Why can the government not do it? Wild Rose, government would do it. Jim Prentice, you're 45. Well, to have, uh, thank you for the question, to have predictable and stable funding for our important public services, health care, education, seniors and, and others, we do have to get off of the boom-bust cycle. It's important that we do that. You know, over the next four years, our province will be short $18 billion in oil revenue as a result of the collapse in, in oil prices. And so we must diversify our economy around our strengths, uh, forestry, our uh, tourism industry, agricultural, our knowledge-based uh, industries at the universities and colleges. But we also must broaden and diversify the revenue base of the government because we are dependent for close to 20% of our revenue on oil revenue. And so the important uh, steps that we have to take are to diversify that revenue base to provide stability for our services. That's time there. We're going to go to David Swan now. Your 45 seconds begins right now. Liberals will cut personal taxes to protect lower, middle, lower and middle income Albertans and eliminate small business tax to protect jobs and create diversification in our, in our business climate. More than 50% of Albertans will get a tax cut under our plan. And for many, their taxes will remain the same. For the top earners, there will be a modest tax increase. They will pay their share. Our plan will empower and diversify our economy by eliminating the small business tax and will cancel the health levy that increases bureaucracy and waste Ten seconds. and reverses many of the government's unnecessary, we would reverse many of the government's unnecessary new fees. Our plan is $1.4 billion better than the Prentice plan. Floor is open for debate. Well, if I might say, Gord, um, you know, as we, so as we face these challenges, so many PC as, ministers and as we so face many these challenges, started here, let's, let him, let's let him, let's let him. Start I just can't handle the diversification that he keeps talking about. If he I talks might, and talks about might, it, Mr. and premiers have done it for so long, and PC premiers have done it for so long, ministers have done it for so long, why can he not come up with a plan? The plan should have been done already, but Mr. we still Prentice, have no plan. Your response to that. Uh, well, if I might, um, if I might say, uh, Mr. Moderator, um, I was going to address my comments to um, Ms. Notley. 
you know, uh, as we face the challenges of, uh, of jobs, creating jobs, losing jobs, the last thing that we need are NDP policies that are going to damage our competitiveness, things like a royalty review, 20% uh, corporate income tax, which would give us a higher corporate tax rate than BC what or are you Ontario talking about? Our, or Quebec. Our proposed corporate tax how rate you is 12%. To I'm not how, sure who's how you briefing you, but I, I just do need to clarify that 10 that's to 12 absolutely incorrect. I know that, I know that math is difficult, but no, no. If you're saying 10 percent to 12 percent is a 20 percent increase. You said a 20 percent no. tax. If you I didn't might say increase, if so I, I might just need increase. to make that clear that we're not proposing a 20 percent corporate tax. That would be ridiculous. If I might carry on, the last thing we need in an environment where we're trying to create jobs are the sort of NDP policies that you're speaking of, a royalty review, increased corporate taxes, well, no, higher good minimum friend. wages, you're all good of the friend. things that you're will damage our competitiveness. Your good friend over to the West, uh, Christy Clark, she raised corporate taxes by one point, and you know what happened? They had more jobs there. Your good friends over in Ontario, your they rates slashed will go higher corporate than tax. BC's rates. She slapped, you know, they have a sales tax, a massive sales tax. In Ontario, they slashed the corporate tax, and you know what happened? The manufacturing sector started to die and jobs went away. So it's not as simple this as you're saying. This will represent 18,000 you know, jobs, Ms. Notley. Well, Why would you give up 18,000 jobs? You know what? You get two economists in a room, you'll get five opinions. Why would you give up 18,000 jobs in the environment that we currently are in? Albertans Anybody else told want to weigh you in? they want contributions to pay their fair share, and you ignored them. You and, and we have a plan to create 27,000 jobs. Just, so I think that, uh, you know, instead of quoting your, your favorite economist, you might want to actually listen to what Albertans have to say because they don't think it's fair that we continue to leave your corporate friends off the well, hook let me while some we others take too, a billion dollars out of let's our health care Well, the way to get off the roller coaster is simple. It's to stop spending so much money on management and PC mismanagement and waste. We've seen it time and time again, whether it's the 14,000 cell phones that Alberta Health Services have or whether it's the $60 million in severances that it, they paid out over the last three years for government employees. It's ridiculous. $100,000 to move an employee from Ontario to Calgary. $25,000 to move somebody from Lethbridge to Calgary. Who's in charge here? Nobody's controlling the expenditures of the government. Nobody's taking care of your money. A wild rose government would take care of your money. I Dr. promise. Swan. Rachel, I, I, I really think your heart is in the right place. I think it's clear, though, that you're not being very clear about where you're going with the energy industry and how much you're going to pump into job creation. We can't be building and incenting jobs with money uh, without being much more clear about what the deliverables will be. I've been very clear. My plan uh, uh, gives a tax credit. Uh, it's very clear. It's one that's been used in the Obama uh, administration and it's been used elsewhere. And the idea is that it would incent roughly 27,000 uh, jobs. In terms of our Resource Owner Rights Commission, let me talk about that for a minute because that's Briefly, really important. Briefly, and then we'll give Mr. Prentice our an opportunity. Our energy industry is fundamental to what this province does. And for years, Albertans have been told, don't worry your pretty little heads, we'll make the decisions. You have no right to have any say on whether we're getting our fair share of royalties or whether we're upgrading our resources. We've long since strayed from the principles that Peter Law, he laid out when he talked about how to develop our energy industry. And every time someone tries to raise it, we get the, all these sort of skies and that's your falling response now threats. From Mr. Prentice but that's to that. disrespectful to Albertans. What we're Ms. proposing Notley. is to give them a transparent forum within which to learn what can we do. Can we do it better or not? Mr. Prentice. If I might, um, Mr. Moderator, the, the NDP policies, uh, Ms. Notley, that you speak of, I respectfully disagree. They will not create jobs. You and your union bosses, uh, Gil McGowan, the head of the Alberta Federation of Labor, he said a loss of 8,000 jobs is not a significant number. Is that your position? Is that your view? Uh, I've never said that, so why would that be my review? I've introduced a plan that would actually generate 27,000 jobs this year. Your plan, your plan actually talks about okay. firing 2,000 public what? sector workers. Ten seconds, ten seconds, seconds away. to go in Your this. plan talks about firing people, not mine. The Liberal plan would eliminate small business tax and have the private sector to create the jobs instead of public sector paying. Yeah, we'll leave it All at right. that. We're going to wrap it up there. It. Thank you. All right, it is time to take a short break. Uh, the leaders will remain on the hot seat, however, and address issues that matter to you and your family, we hope. You're watching the Leaders Debate 2015 exclusively here on Global TV.
Welcome back to the leaders' debate for the provincial election. We're broadcasting live from our global studios in Edmonton tonight. And every, welcome to everyone watching us on Shaw channels across the province, as well as listening on CPAC across the country, listening in Chorus Alberta Radio, and of course our live stream at globalnews.ca, where our lively live blog continues. Yes, let's get back to it now with a question from Roger Kincaid for Liberal leader David Swan. You will have 45 seconds to answer. Roger, go ahead. Dr. Swan, Alberta has been the target of environmental activists who malign our province for our record on oil sands development and greenhouse gas emissions. What will you do as leader to send a message to the rest of Canada and the world that Alberta is serious about meeting greenhouse gas emissions targets while protecting jobs and fostering expansion in the energy sector? Thank you, Roger. The Enbridge and Keystone XL pipelines have taught us that pipelines will not get built until we demonstrate better performance on the environment. It's not about communication, it's about improving performance. This is our economy's number one threat. Americans don't trust Mr. Prentice and this PC government on the environment, and Albertans shouldn't either. This government fails to recognize that our economy and our environment are one. Even industry gets this, I've spoken to them. They're looking for the province to show leadership and create a level playing field. Clearly, we need to put a price on carbon. Ten seconds. Mr. Prentice is reluctant to do that. It's the fairest, simplest, uh, least expensive to monitor and, and manage. Uh, this is the way to go forward and send the right message to the international community as well as to Canadians. Up thank next you, Dr. is uh, Swan. Rachel Notley. Well, thank you. Well, Albertans want to, be, want to be proud of how we protect our air and our land and our water. And also, if we want access to markets, we need to be leaders on the environment. Missing the uh, meeting in Ottawa uh, where people, leaders across the country were talking about the environment, frankly, did not show leadership uh, by this government. Now, for decades, this government has been kicking the can down the road Road, risking our natural environment and putting our jobs and prosperity at risk. Now what we can do is we can start by focusing on energy efficiency and renewable energy, two things that we've uh, long since let go in this province. We need to improve and enforce Ten our seconds. environmental standards and we also need to consider ways to reduce our reliance on coal. There are so many things that we can do to improve our environmental record. It's just having a government that cares about That's making time. it happen. Thank you. And now we go to Jim Prentice for your, your 45 seconds. Begin now. Well, thank you. Uh, Alberta is proudly in the energy business and we are proudly, therefore, in the environment business as well. And we must excel at both. We must be a leader uh, nationally and internationally. We must also make sure that we don't damage our industrial competitiveness and lose jobs. But we need to build on our success and our success includes, for example, making sure that we meet our 2020 GHD reduction targets, which uh, we will be able to meet. We need to set our 2030 targets in advance of the Paris meeting. We need to participate in the Paris meeting. We need to strike international partnerships such as with the World Bank that views us as their partner of choice, for example, on the venting and flaring Ten seconds. Of, of, uh, of, of missions. But we also need to renew our industrial framework to set intensity targets and to renew the price on carbon. Time's All of up. this is what we need to do. Thank you. And now we go to Mr. Jean again, 45 seconds. Thank you. As an energy producing economy, we need to take climate change seriously. It's a very serious issue and man-made climate change is real. We must tackle it head-on in a way that makes sense for our economy, our specific economy. We will and introduce the plan which is simple and clear. We will reduce emissions with the natural gas strategy and move away from Alberta's reliance on coal. And we will make sure that Alberta's energy development is always balanced with strictly enforced environmental rules. There is nothing more important than our air, Ten seconds. than our water, than our land, than our children that use that, and we will make sure that it is a proper place with a proper environment for our children and for future generations. Time's up, open for free I debate. Think, I think it's very disturbing that uh, this man to my left, Mr. Prentice, was the federal environment minister. They not only abdicated their responsibilities on uh, climate change and, and greenhouse gas emission reductions, they have not, now he's now bringing that same attitude to Alberta, and none of us, I don't think, in Alberta believe that we're gonna reach targets, nor has he been uh, without complicity in extending the coal phase-out guidelines in Alberta by five years, adding another 40 percent to the, the greenhouse gas emissions to this province. This man does not get it that, that the balance is not achieved and we're not even working towards a serious commitment to the environment Mr. in Prentice? this province. 
Uh, well, you know, I, I would just remind my colleague that I was the federal environment minister that negotiated the fuel efficiency standards, which are the single most important thing in North America to reduce emissions. But, but I, w I would like to ask Ms. Notley a question, and it relates to the NDP policy uh, surrounding emission reduction, which would be to accelerate the premature phase out of coal plants. And I, I would ask uh, Ms. Notley, this will drive up electricity costs, this will cost us jobs, we will be closing plants in advance of the obligated period to run them. How are we going to pay for this? Who is going to pay for the billions of dollars that we'll have to pay for the early closure of these plants? Well, Mr. Prentice, once again, you're engaging in fear-mongering. And one thing that I want to begin by saying is that uh, there's not a dichotomy between jobs and protecting the environment. And, and your government's record on this, every time someone challenges you to do something of any kind of meaningful way on the environment is to suddenly fear-monger and say, no, nope, can't do it, it's about jobs. The fact of the matter is, is that there are strategies in place that could be used to phase out coal. We haven't even started looking at it. I haven't come up with a specific plan. Your folks well, have ignored it and your previous ministers have well, refused Ms. to Ms. do any work on Ms. that. Ms. Lally, Moreover, Moreover the... you have a climate change strategy Let's which is hear about a response four from Mr. years Prentice. overdue, Raise Mr. Prentice. Let's let him and respond, we've please. lost uh, economic opportunities as a result. Ms. Notley, I, I've not ignored the coal thermal plants. As the federal minister, I negotiated the closure dates. If and you're extended going to, them. If you are going to... You extended if you them. Are, let me finish, please. If you are going to close those plants early, I know there are billions of dollars of damages that have to be paid. How are you going to pay that? Well, and those well, damages, of course, would be owed because you will let Stan not leave the amount of time that you allowed those, those, those coal plants to operate because, once again, your focus was never about improving the environment. You know, we have a, a horrible international reputation. Getting re Phasing out coal is one way to create social license so that we can uh, uh, grow and expand the opportunities of other parts of our our energy industry. Close okay, your thought, please. Know this Close and your they're thought. frustrated and with your Jean. lack of action. Mr. Jean. What frightens me the most in this is that we have a government and a premier that won't make up his mind. Whether it's eliminating parts of his budget, the charity tax credit, whether it's changing the election date that he promised during the leadership race not to change. And especially, what makes me the most frightened is Jim Prentice actually spoke out in favor of royalty reviews back in 2008 when it took place. He said that it struck the right balance. That balance, in my mind, obviously had serious repercussions for our economy and even now today many corporations question the ability of whether they will come and set up shop here because we have a, a premier Jim Prentice who in 2008 spoke out in favor of the royalty reviews so that's it was right okay balance. that's where we're going to end that free debate thank you very much we're going to move on to our next question from Tom Vernon a question for Jim Prentice who will have 45 seconds to respond Mr. Prentice, you said for months that tough decisions need to be made, but this week you reversed a decision to cut the charitable tax credit because of public pressure. Why should Albertans believe the budget you introduced four weeks ago will be the budget you introduce if you form government? The budget that uh, I have put before Albertans uh, is a comprehensive document. It has been reviewed by financial analysts uh, across the country. It's received favorable comment that it is a plan that will balance Alberta's budget in a responsible way. It will protect frontline jobs. It will create infrastructure jobs. And over three years, it will reduce the cost of our government down to the national average. There was one aspect of it, uh, namely the charitable tax reduction, which I listen to Albertans. And I think it's important that uh, if you have something wrong, that you change it. And so I changed it. But this budget is a strong budget. Ten it seconds. is the only plan before Albertans that represents how we are going to solve the fiscal problems that we have in this province. Dr. Swan, uh, you're 45. Alberta Liberals are committed to improving the lives of our citizens, especially the most vulnerable, who are benefiting greatly from the nonprofit organizations and volunteer organizations across the province that hugely benefit from charitable donations. They are seriously concerned about the kind of uh, hot air balloon that again that the Premier has put forward. Uh, these individuals and, corporate and organizations need to have the assurance that this government puts the vulnerable at the top of the agenda. Albertans need to ask themselves why the Prentice Conservatives, Conservatives cut it in the first place and what, what else he's going to flip-flop Ten in. seconds. Health care is an obvious example. We've gone eight years with going from regions to centralized, now back to regions. Uh, many Albertans are saying, how can we believe anything, this Premier says. That's time. Now to Brian Jean. Thank you. After 2008, charities had very difficult times right across North America, especially here in Canada. 
I sat on the Finance Committee in Ottawa and we heard and did a study from experts, sat down and listened to evidence that suggested many different ways to encourage charitable giving. And our government, federal government, after Jim Prentice was gone, looked at many, many ways on how to encourage charity giving because we wanted to make sure that charities had enough to, to go around because they serve a very, very important purpose. And we want to make sure that we support that purpose in whatever we do. I would like to have an opportunity to talk about some of the cuts that Jim Prentice says we're going Ten to make. Ten seconds. And I would say that if he looks at page five, it talks about reducing the number of ministers and the size of the Premier's office. It talks about rolling back the Cabinet and MLA pay raises that they did in secret and reducing Sir, your expenses. time is up. Thank you very much. Final 45 seconds to Rachel Notley. Well, well thank you. Well, I always, I've, I've always uh, been, I've been elected since 2008, and I've always found it uh, rather amusing uh, when the Conservative government, government comes out with one of their multi-year plans, uh, regardless of what it's about, whether it's the climate change plan or the land use plan, or in this case, the 10-year budget plan. And, and invariably, those plans last for about a year. This one lasted a little bit less. Uh, I'm glad that uh, Mr. Prentice did reverse that decision on the charitable tax donation. It was always uh, one of the things that we'd included in our platform that we would have released. We need to support those those uh, people within our community that uh, work Ten with seconds. Alberta's most vulnerable. We would also increase funding for FCSS, a long overdue thing that would help many, many community organizations across the province. The floor is open for free debate. The PCs have really uh, underfunded public services, support services for the most vulnerable since the 1990s when they were cut. We are up to 20% lower in our per capita spending on public services compared to the national average. We have never caught up since the Klein cuts. And for, for a, a party that says the vulnerable are a priority for them, I think you have a lot to answer for. Well, FCSS is one that hasn't been raised, uh, you know, in the last eight years and continues to languish. A preventive social service program shared with municipalities and you have basically done nothing. Let's hear a response. That. Well, if I, if I might just speak to, to two matters that have been put forward. Firstly, uh, uh, you know, Brian has repeatedly said that, uh, that this Conservative budget increases costs, taxes, $2,500 uh, per family. This is completely wrong. This is completely misleading Albertans. If you look at page 101 of the budget, the cost for a family of that makes $120,000 per year with two children is exactly $288 That's per year. That's if they year. sit at home and don't leave the if home. If I might carry on. If I might carry on. Okay, Mr. If Prentice, let's have insurance. Mr. Jean respond to that. Go ahead. Well, the only way that they're going to spend that kind of money, it's pretty simple. You take the number, $11.8 billion over four years, you divide it by the amount of Albertans, and you find out that they're going to pay about just over $10,000 extra in taxes. It's not rocket science. You have numbers. You have it doesn't, so uh, if a might, family uh, of four is going to stay at home and not leave home, not buy gas for their car, they didn't buy a house, and they didn't go camping with their kids or buy insurance or have a respond. baby, certainly they wouldn't spend any money on Jim Prentice and his cronies. I'm not sure what, um, if I might, um, Mr. Moderator, I'm not sure that that's a, an answer, but uh, well, let's it's, very clear, the, it's very let's clear, it's very clear, Mr. Prentice here. It's very clear in the budget that the cost is less than a dollar per day for a family that makes $120,000 per year under this budget. Now, in terms of uh, the comment that, uh, that my friend made um, about protecting the vulnerable, this budget also contains uh, a new innovation called the New Alberta Working Family Credit, which makes matters appreciably easier for a family that's working, uh, that is struggling to make ends meet, that has children. Uh, it makes sure that vulnerable Albertans, Albertans uh, who are struggling to feed their families, are receiving very fair With treatment in our tax. Tax. Like you, tax 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 on, you could reduce yeah. the tax on the lower and middle Mr. Swan, let's have Mrs. Let Notley reduce the tax. I, I mean, I, I want to, I'm going to start by surprising viewers by saying you deserve a bit of credit for bringing in that plan. It was a, it was a, a small portion of what advocates in the area have been asking for. So, so good for you. But the problem is this, and it's twofold. First of all, that part of your plan doesn't kick in until 15 months from now. And I'm sorry, but you need to take responsibility for the history of your party in terms of making promises and then not keeping them. In the last election, we listened to your former leader promise to eliminate child poverty for in, within five years and then sit by and not lift a single finger to do anything about it. So that 15 month delay in implementing that credit worries me. The other part of it is that it discriminates on the basis of income. So if you're a single mom on age, you don't get the benefit 
benefit of that tax credit, but you do if you're working. So it's not doing what it needs to do. Well, it's Ms. a Notley, good start. It's a good start, thank but you it's for the absolutely not would, what we actually need Prentice, to deal you with go the problem. Go ahead and reply, and then thank we'll get you to Dr. I, I would just make the point that our age payments are the most generous in, in the country. And it we doesn't should, deal, and but we they're still below the poverty line, and you know that. We should keep it that way. That age mom is in poverty, and so is her her Mr. Child. Prentice, please, Thank what was you. your thought? Uh, I simply make the point that, our, that we protect the vulnerable in this province, and this budget has gone to great lengths to ensure that the vulnerable and we people who are struggling to make ends meet are protected. We have the highest gap between rich and poor in this province in the okay. country. Okay. And economists we'll say that that's Mr. really we'll very Dr. Swan Dr. Swan now. Go ahead. We, do not, we do not have a fair tax regime here. We, in the lower and middle income people pay more taxes than, than B.C. and Saskatchewan. If you really want a fair tax regime, why don't you reduce the taxes the Alberta Liberal plan would do by 0.5% for those that earn under $50,000. Final year. comment to Brian Jean. It's interesting that Jim used the, the amount of $120,000. Um, I find it very troubling that he would use a number like $365 for each and every family. If you Ten times seconds. that by one million Albertans, I think Albertans at home right now should do the calculation and find out exactly how that would add up over four years to $11.8 billion. It doesn't add up. Thank you right. all. Thank you. Thank you very much. That brings our free debate to a close. I think it's safe to say it has been quite a night and hopefully you're getting some answers to the questions that you have had about the important issues that you're facing. We are not finished yet. Each party leader has one more chance to win your vote through their closing statement and you'll hear it. Welcome back. You're watching the Leaders Debate for the 2015 Alberta Provincial Election. We have heard from all four candidates on a wide variety of issues tonight. Yeah, and it's time now for closing statements from the party leaders. The order was once again done by a draw. And our first closing statement will come from NDP leader Rachel Notley. You have one minute. Thank you. I want to thank my colleagues and I want to thank Global News for hosting tonight's debate. And I want to thank you for staying with us even if there is a game in a few minutes. Alberta is changing. It's time for the government to change too. The choices in this election are clear. You can hire Mr. Prentice and his friends to keep on doing what they've been doing. You can hire Mr. Jean and make things even worse. Or you can hire me and elect a team with new ideas. We'll invest in job creation. We'll improve your family's health care and education. We'll run our province more openly and honestly. Alberta is a great place to live, but we're on the wrong track. So this time, in this election, I'm asking for your support. I'm asking you to vote with hope and optimism in your heart so that we can get on the right track and chart a new course uh, for a better and newer Alberta. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel Notley. Liberal leader David Swan, you are next, sir. Trust. Elections are about choice. And the choice shouldn't be just between a party of the far left and the far right. The choice shouldn't be a governing party that has become cynical, complacent, and often corrupt. The choice is about trust. Our plan, the Liberal plan, is specifically designed for you and your family. We will protect jobs, educate our children, care for our sick and elderly, and build our cities and towns. Alberta Liberals are not beholden to any special interest group, just your interests. The Alberta Liberal Party is the practical and progressive alternative to the regressive Conservative Party. Alberta Liberals have always been there and we always will be. Please visit albertaliberal.com for our progressive vision in our great province. Thank you, Alberta. Good night. Now to Wild Rose leader Brian Jean for his closing remarks again. Mr. Jean, you will have one minute. Go ahead. When Jim Prentice government needed to make tough decisions, they raised your taxes 59 times. That means that Alberta families will have to pay an extra $2,500 of taxes each and every year thanks to Jim Prentice and the PC party. Their decision hurts you. I will reverse those tax hikes. I will not raise your taxes. No exceptions, no conditions. I will not raise your taxes. Our plan for Alberta will lower your taxes and balance the budget. Put patients and seniors first in our health care make our schools better for our kids, and restore transparency and accountability in our government that's so desperately needed. Alberta families shouldn't pay more for PC mismanagement. On May 5th, I need your support to stop Jim Prentice, to stop his PC friends, and to stop their 59 tax hikes. My name is Brian Jean, 
and I would like to be your Premier. Thank you, Mr. Jean. And final closing comments tonight from PC leader Jim Prentice. Thank you. It's true Alberta is facing significant challenges, but we've tackled tough times before and we've got through it. And together we can build a province where families are secure, knowing that they have good jobs, stable jobs and a bright future. And I make a pledge to you, if elected as your Premier, I will put the interests of Alberta and Albertans first, ahead of my own or any partisan interests. I will work hard for you each and every day. I will bring back the core values that Albertans expect and that Albertans deserve. We will spend uh, within our means, we will focus on value for our tax dollars, we will save more for the future. And in all we do, we will stay proud of our history and confident in our future. I ask for your support and your ideas. Together, let's choose Alberta's future. Thank you and good night. And that concludes our time for tonight. We'd like to thank all of the party leaders. I don't think you hear it enough, the public service you do, whatever your political stripes, we appreciate the sacrifices you make with your families, uh, and good luck to you all coming up. Uh, a big thanks to our panel as well tonight for helping craft questions we hope uh, address some important issues for Albertans. Yeah, and hopefully after you've been watching and listening, you've learned a little bit more, and hopefully it, what we really want to do is help you decide how to cast your ballot on May 5th. If there are a lot of choices out there, so hopefully we've clarified a few things and we've touched on those really important issues that matter to you and your family. The Live stream continuing. Yes, that's we right. The discussion doesn't end here. Yeah, play along still if you'd like. We've got some here. Emily Mertz will have a wrap of some of the best of tweets of the night uh, and highlights from our live blog as well. Some interesting analysis there from our body language expert as well as our marketing guru and our political analyst. And then, of course, Tom Vashi and Roger are going to join in as well for their perspective on what they watch tonight. Yeah, it has been an interesting night. We have covered a lot of topics and we appreciate you spending your evening with us. Thank you for watching and listening tonight. Please remember to vote on May 5th. Good night. Go Flames Go. Good night. <laughs>